Let's take a look at the top five SaaS websites that I've found that you might not know about. These are not gonna be your typical stripe.com, all that stuff. But anyways, the first one we're gonna take a look at is betterstack.com. A lot of these sites are gonna have similar layout, similar vibes, bentos, minimal, that kind of thing. But anyways, let's get started. So I'm gonna reload this so that we can see what's going on in real time. We have the animation that kind of brings the text up and then with time, the text changes from spot downtime, resolve downtime, prevent downtime. Very nice. So this is gonna be a website from this H1. What I'm, what I'm reading here is gonna be, this is a SaaS that helps people with other SaaS that can help you prevent downtime and see where things are going down and how to fix it and see your users, things like that. Anyways, let's keep moving. So it's interesting that when you first load the site, you don't actually see the logo cloud down here, only when you scroll down. But when you scroll down, you see that these are some massive, massive companies. I mean, you've got my favorite company in the world, which is the Catalan. We have UNICEF, Time, Salesforce. So this is a big, big website. Then we have text on the left, image on the right, and then a couple of link blocks down here explore logs, learn more. This would actually be quite a helpful SaaS for me, for my own SaaS, which is quite interesting now that I'm looking at it. But anyways, so one thing I like about this is that although we have a very nice image with the actual product that, they, that they're selling on the right here, they're also supplementing it with this background image when, when they didn't really need to. But that just shows that just because your content itself is nice, doesn't mean that you can't add something decorative to the layout itself. It doesn't all need to be super utilitarian, you know? In this case, we have the same kind of layout, but a different image on the back, which I think looks great. But anyways, resolve downtime faster than ever. Monitors, and we can see here clearly it's not too small. Heartbeats, who's on the call? Incident status pages, I don't know what half of these mean, and I should probably because I own a SaaS. But anyways, this is a very nice feature section so far. We scroll all the way down and we kind of end that dark section onto the light with this status page. So this is super important to, if you've ever seen status pages, it tells you when something is down. So you can see, okay, for example, if you have an API that you're calling or something like that, you need to always see when it's going down, why it went down. For example, ChatGPT is down, okay? I can actually see that it's down, it's not just my Wi-Fi, you know? That is very important for big companies like this. Then we got, how is better stack better? So that kind of ends in the whole dark feature section thing and we go into this light. One thing that's interesting about this is that they're kind of answering the most obvious question. When you go on someone's site like this, if they're a big company, they probably will have a competitor. In this case, it seems to be Datadog. And so why not just answer the question and help people decide which tool that they wanna use instead of giving them kind of the little carrots and then they have to choose for themselves, you know? Just say, how are we better than the competitors? Okay, 10 times faster than Elastic. Collaboration and observability together. Beautiful, simple, integrated. You know, it's fine. It's, it's easy enough for a simpleton like me to understand why they might be better than their competitors. And then we keep on with the light, which is actually quite interesting. I do wonder what the rest of the site looks like. So let's go into solutions here just for now. All right, so the rest of the site is gonna be in dark mode, but for some reason they wanted this to go from gray to white, and then we don't really see that in the rest of the page, which is super, super interesting. And so we can see that the rest of the site follows that dark pattern with purple, so very typical SaaS kind of website. And then we've got this bento grid section here, which we're gonna see quite a lot. It's probably not bento, it's just a grid. And then the dots in the back are a very nice touch. So I've used dots similar to this before when you have a white section or a dark section and it just looks a little bit too bland and boring. What you can do is you can add in these dots here and this is just an image that they added as a background layer probably, but you can add in these dots and it gives it a tiny bit of elevation from the cards above it so it doesn't feel super bland and boring. Also, what this is doing is it's kind of helping to connect these two sections without being super like we have here. So we can kind of go a little bit smoother into the next section. But anyways, enough about the dots. A lot of times with SaaS sites like this, we're gonna have a bunch of mega nabs for their different features, who they're selling to, case studies, things like that. So for example, enterprise is usually its own thing. So yeah, we've got a lot of unique kind of sections here that can give you a lot of inspiration for your own SaaS site. And that's why I really like this site. It gives us a lot of different inspiration, a lot of different layouts. Let's go to documentation. Sometimes SaaS sites have their own documentation, just like this, good enough. Let's go to the pricing. Pricing is usually an interesting exercise in, in layouts because a lot of people have a lot of features and it's hard to kind of understand 
understand why you're paying so much money for something. And so the exercise is to be able to create a layout that helps your users understand everything without being overwhelming. In this case, I do think it's a bit overwhelming. I mean, this is a lot, but when you have such a massive product that has so many different features, it's kind of hard not to get this overwhelming maybe. This is something that we see with a lot of different huge, huge SaaS companies. But anyways, I think that the basic thing like this is quite nice. We have free on the left, 29 is where it starts at. If you go annually or monthly, ooh, that's quite nice. That little text change, very nice. And then depending on your usage, it's gonna obviously grow and increase the amount that you have to pay. So next up we have catalog.com. So we move away from the dark and into the light. And one of the things that I like about SaaS sites or the, the reason why I like looking at SaaS sites so much is because it's an interesting exercise in how you can make something so boring appear interesting and fun for the user. And within that, you also need to answer a lot of important questions. You need to come off as, as an authority. You need to feel safe for the user. So it's just a very cool kind of thing to design when you're looking at, at these kind of websites. So layout wise, we have text here, imagery here, but what's going on in the background, we have what I would bet my left kidney on is going to be a sort of animation. Now what this animation is, is either a video. So you can see here, open this up. Okay. So I seem to be wrong about this. It's actually columns with animations that are kind of built into it, which is very, very cool. So I would lose something important to me there. But anyways, usually these these animations are done with a background Lottie file and you just have it looping, but that might be quite heavy on the loading. So that might be a, a lighter way of doing it. Anyways, on to the next. We have this very, very, very nice interaction here and key data resources. We skipped over this one, but connect your knowledge and then scroll down and key data resources. So we see how we're kind of connecting the data resources. We've got prices of things, we've got dates. So this feels like it's going to be some sort of Excel sheet or data sheet and doesn't be Excel. But this is a very nice text effect that they've got going on here. This kind of typewriter old style feeling to it. So again, they managed to do something so boring, like an Excel sheet or any type of sheet and make it feel like it's something exclusive and cool. And I just kind of want to use it, even though I have no, I have no need for this right now, but I just kind of want to get started and book a demo. Anyways, that's actually quite interesting. I would add a transition to that effect, but that's just me. This background here as well, could use with a small bit of elevation. Let's go into resources and see what else we've got here. Ah, oh, that's quite nice. So this product nav here, number one, it changes color to blue, which is the first time we're seeing this color. So that's quite an interesting choice. And it plays that animation on hover, which is an interesting place to put that kind of feature image effect. But we see that we don't get any animations on the resources nav. And then we got pricing, login, book a demo, get started for free. So ask catalog, book a demo, get started for free. Okay, cool. So we've got simple layouts here. We got your typical text on the left, image on the right, or image on the left, text on the right. And so we see that although the layouts themselves are simple, the way that they styled it with these lines that go across the entire site makes it feel like it's something a little bit more important than, than what the layout would suggest. Then on security, we have a lines telling a story that everything's connected. We have this no data indexing. So all the layouts kind of fit into these column styles which help make it feel like it's super structured and the layout makes sense in terms of the whole story of what the product is. It's not just like, why not? Let's put a layout here, a layout there. You know, everything kind of makes sense. Everything falls into place. But anyways, that's it for now. Let's go on to the next one before we run out of time for this video. Now, the next one is multi.app and this site is built using Framer. So it's a super simple layout, but it's not the layout itself that I like. It's the way that the font is styled, the way that we're adding these small tags on top and the way that we can build something like this that's well thought out that doesn't need a thousand pages you only need a single landing page in most cases in most SaaS websites to sell your product now here we've got a couple things going on number one if you can tell this is actually me moving these layouts so we can do this inside of framer which is fantastic and so build software faster together so we're telling a story that okay it's kind of like figma where you have multiple cursors going on so why not do the same thing with code and that's the story that i'm getting from this we have the finder down here, multi, Chantel's Xcode, and Alex's linear. So we can kind of collaborate with multiple people. Let's see what happens if we click on these. Nothing. Okay, that's fine. I mean, they really need to. But it's cool that there's so many interactive layers to this that we can actually build the SaaS landing page without having to do a ton of work. I mean, yes, this is work, but you know, we're not building tens of pages with tons of, of layouts like we had in the first site. This is just a simple landing page. Here are some of the features, screen share done right and everything else too. Multiplayer by default, automatic deep links, 
audio video quality. So all the stuff that you would expect and then a simple logo cloud of some of the people that are using this kind of software. So just with these one, two, three, four sections, I get the idea of what this website is supposed to do, what the software does and that's pretty much it. There's no crazy animations that are needed. I mean, would you clarify, would you consider this crazy? Uh, maybe, but it's cool that all these links work as well. I mean, there's a lot of work that went into this, so hats off to them. But anyways, let's go keep moving on. So we have then these icon text list thing going on. So action items, recordings, ask questions, AI summary. So just a summary of all the features that are, that might be most important here. Then we've got change log which is going to be one of the most important features of the site. If you are a new company and you want to kind of show that you're doing a lot of a lot of new changes so people don't get annoyed. And then that's pretty much it. Then we got what is new, which I'm guessing is the change log, the blog. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So very nice, simple landing page, but super well done. So hats off to them. That's all you really need in in hindsight, if your marketing is elsewhere that isn't SEO, then this is all you really need, especially if you've got product hunt and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, on to the next one. The next one is going to be framer.com's actual site, because if you take a look at their site, and I'm just going to reload it. If you take a look at it, there's a lot of things that they do right. In this case, we have, I mean, again, my opinion, you don't need to agree with me, but in my opinion, this animation on the right side here helps us understand what the product does without having to say, okay, we are, this is an image of someone building a website. There's no need for that. It's okay. A super nice button animation. Then we got some of the features here. We got transitions. We got all the stuff that, that matters when we're building the site, but we're not being so boring to say, you know, here's, here's a site. This is how you build it. We can do that later on, but in the hero, we're kind of we're, we're selling the feeling of what this website has to be. Logo cloud down here, some of the people that are that are using it. That's actually quite a nice animation. I hadn't seen that before, but when you hover over one of these, you can click meet some of our amazing customers. So we've got customer stories down here. Fantastic. I'd like to be in one of these, you know, because why not? But uh, anyways, we've got some more interactions and animations here. So here, what we're seeing is two things. Number one is going to be some of the most important features, which is for Framer, in this case, design, publish and scale. So previously, maybe they thought that they weren't kind of selling themselves as, as something that you can scale. It's just like small sites and stuff like that. So in this case, scale is something that they want to add in. They got design and publish as well. So we have on scroll, we got these two panels here on the right and left side that kind of move up and down independently of that image. So that's quite nice. And then as we scroll down, we've got design in minutes, publish sites in seconds. So a small gallery of some of the work that they've featured. And I've been doing quite a couple of videos on Framer, so you might recognize some of these from my videos. But after that, we've got this here, which kind of just took me by surprise. But this is taking your name from either your Arc account or Chrome account or something like that, which is a absolutely insane thing. I would, it just blew my mind. But anyways, talk about adding a layer of customizability to your site. Apart from that, we got this, this uh, bento section that has, I mean, is it bento? It's more just like we got feature sections that are layered over and they kind of interlock, but you could call it a bento if you wanted to. It's a little bit easier. So we have design, collaborate, layout and breakpoints, effects, navigation, plugins, SEO performance, built in CMS. So it's kind of like boom, 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 boom. Here's everything that we're doing. It's not just a small site builder. It's it's something that you can actually rely on, right? So we've got these feature sections that blend in together. We got the AI tools, SEO performance, localization, all that stuff. And then we get a couple of sites that are made inside of Framer or with Framer. And that kind of shows that, you know, this is kind of like the portfolio of Framer in itself. You can click on the image of the site. And if you take a look at the bottom left corner here, you'll see that it'll actually open up that same site. So I'm just going to click that just to see that thread because it might be a little bit interesting to see what that looks like. And that's quite interesting in itself. Threads.com is not available. Maybe they changed the domain after Meta launched. But anyways, let's see what else we've got going on here. So Thirsty Dumpling. Okay, cool. So it shows that this is built with Framer. Anyways, after that, we got a couple of resources and I featured some of the resources from another video with my shorts. So if you want to go ahead and check those out and then some quick testimonials here. So I'm almost expecting to see my name here after after they, they did that. But yeah, absolutely insane. So this is a very nice SaaS site. And as I said previously, in one of the other sites, SaaS sites usually have a lot of features that they want to showcase. So in this case, we got design, publish, scale. So design here, and we see that we've got a similar thing going on. So we've got the video in the middle is obviously captivating our attention. We want to click it. And so we've got the left and right panels here that scroll 
that kind of hover with our scroll and then the color pattern here that we can move around. It'd be cool if we could actually choose a color here and then maybe it would change the background color, but maybe that's too much. But anyways, we can see that these features are gonna be carefully explained in all these, in all these sections. And then we can go on and keep moving on to maybe navigation, look at all the things here, and then keep going maybe onto pages or animations. And then it just keeps going on and on and on. So all these landing pages are gonna be super important to help sell the actual product. But anyways, enough of that. Let's go on to the last one, which is gonna be Serif, which is a SaaS website template that you can get inside of Webflow. So I'm just gonna open this up and on load, we can see that the text nicely comes up. And the reason I like this is because maybe it's being overdone now, but the Serif fonts are absolutely dominating. So right now I really like it. White, orange, and black is obviously the kind of thing that I like. If you guys take a look at my own site, my own SaaS site, which I could show in this video, but uh, yeah, white, orange, black is my thing as well. So I like the site, but yeah, home. Let's take a look at some of the examples that we've got going on here. So the serif font is gonna be a big, big component of the site. The SaaS itself is gonna be with sans serif, but we're gonna be using serif in this case to contrast with the sans serif. So as we scroll, we see that we got more bentos, and in this case, we don't have any animations, which is a little bit of a shame. It's very easy to add. It's just a smidge of a interaction to make it feel even just that. If we can put that somewhere in here, we could add in a lot of interaction. So just a very nice site. We got this, this kind of little guy here that adds a lot of character and personality into what's usually quite a boring or utilitarian feeling with SAS. So it's nice to see something a little bit different, even if it is overused with the serif font, just adding character to it, in my opinion, is something that that's not done enough. And then down here, book a demo. It'd be nice if I could actually click that, like I have with my, I'm saying like I have with my, as if you need to do that, but it'd be nice to be able to click that so you can actually book a demo from this massive button like I have on my own site. But anyways, let's check out the about page here. Cool, I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm if I think that these match the feeling of the rest of the site, the rest of the site is quite clean, orange, white. And then we got some gradients here with purple and yellows. I don't think it matches too much, but other than that, it's a very nice layout and a good starting point for a SaaS company. So guys, I hope you liked those five SaaS sites and hopefully they were a little bit different and you didn't know about them not like the typical Shopify, Stripe, and all that stuff. If you guys have any other sites you want me to review, let me know down below. I'll do my best to cover them in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.